our first painting project um, you have already seen the video of how to take care of a paintbrush and the project that we're doing today is a painted eye and you have already looked at your eyes using the mirrors and when you use a mirror okay hopefully you were having a good time looking at yourself um, you should have noticed that the lines of your eye you actually don't see the full circle you saw the full circle I would be like this okay they'd be a little scary um, so what you're going to do is you've already looked at your eye, maybe we've practiced doing some sketchings of how to draw some eyes, then you're going to have a CD and you're going to put it in the middle of your paper, but before you do that I want you to, on the left side of your paper you're going to write your name and check your shoulder buddy to that they make sure that they have their name on there. And when we use a pencil uh, in sketching and in art class I always like you to do light light till you get it right so you can erase it and not make a mistake. So put your find in the center somewhere, set your CD, and you were doing a light line. See how I'm moving my hand around so I can trace it? Then I lift it up. Now, what I have found, if you looked at your eye, um, hopefully you were observing with your artist eye, that you actually have two circles. And so we line this up as best we can, and we make another circle in our eye. And I'm looking at what I have done before, and I might have to, I had another piece of tape. Okay, now if you look at this, that's way too big. So this is a great example. Do not do the inside of the tape. Now, if you have a lot of tape, it will depend on how thick that your line is here. But you really want a thin line, so I'm lining it up as best I can. And like I just showed you, don't do the inside because it's too big of a circle. Go around as best you can. And you're gonna do this over with a sharpie. Oh, I didn't finish that. And this one to me kind of looks really narrow or thin, so we might have to adjust that a little bit. Um, and then what I found, if you take the cap of a glue stick, and remember, you don't want to have it on the edge. Your pupil is right in the center, and it might be a little sticky, so be careful, in the center of your eyeball. And so I'm tracing this as best I can. It's like there's a little bit of glue on that. And so, oh, look, it's stuck. So, we might have to be careful when we're using these glue stick and just rub it off very gently. And it should be just fine. Okay, so we put our cap on, snap it back on because we don't need that. So now you have your eye. Now, this is one that I already have ready for you, but I want you to see what I'm talking about when I have the curve in my eye. When you look on the mirror, and we've talked about curved lines, your eye, you don't see the top of it. So very lightly, do you see how I'm just taking my pencil very lightly and it's at an angle. And so that is what your eye actually looks like. I'm hoping that you can see that really well. Um, hopefully it's going into the camera there. Um, then you want to have the top of your eyelid go over the top of that as well. And your bottom, see how right here, this bottom of the eye actually sits I'm drawing it light, actually sits on that line right there. And then it comes up and you can decide the shape of your eyes. And then you have a half circle right there. Now when I'm going back in, I'm not gonna take the time to outline this whole thing just right now because I'm doing this video. I would erase, see how I don't need that top part of that circle of my eyeball? I would erase very carefully. And I have better erasers that are in the closet if you need to use them. And so there is my eye. Now once you've adjusted, and oh, you actually have a line underneath your eye right here. You can use the mirrors again if you need to. Then you're gonna take your Sharpie. Now, Sharpies, you have to be careful with them. We don't need to press hard. Um, if it's not working, you know, test it. Always have a scrap piece of paper here beside you, test it. And this one's kind of dried out, but for the video, I'm gonna use it. Um, so I'm going to go right on where I drew my line very slowly. And like I said, this is not the best marker, but I'm not gonna get up during the middle of the video. And I have several lines where I've sketched it. You don't necessarily have to do all those lines. Then I'm going in, this is the tricky part, and going on top of where I had the circles, okay? Because you want it to be as smooth as possible. Do you see how I'm turning the paper? That will also help you when you're using the Sharpie. So we're gonna pretend I have the whole thing done. And you can write your name in Sharpie too. Okay, kind of like a cooking show. Now, 
I have one that's done. And something that I just purchased for our room are, is, are these containers for the oil pastels. And I think that'll be easier to be able to find the colors. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paper and I have made different designs. And you can choose any kind of colors, you know, bring in those curvy, wavy lines, do some patterns, whatever you want, make it different. I'm not gonna have my example up because I don't want them to look like mine. So when you use, I'm gonna come back to this one just so that other one's done. When you use your oil pastels, this is what's very important. You wanna test them. See how they're dirty? And they're gonna be dirty and your fingers are gonna get dirty. So you might need to wipe them on the paper. You might need to wipe them on a paper towel. You know, we can clean them at the end. If you get them on your table, please make sure we clean them because nobody's gonna to wanna to come in here and get this all over their project. So those ones kind of sticky and I test it and I clean it on a scrap piece of paper. Then you come in and you, like I just said, you have to be careful because you could get it smeared. Now here's another thing. If you do not want to use oil pastels and you do not like the way they feel, I understand that. Then you don't have to look how it's sticking to my finger. We want to put them back in the container where they match with the colors. Like these are the blues and purples. These are the, like I said, they might be mixed. These are greens, oranges, yellows. Okay. And then I would take my paper towel, wipe off my hand, wait till the end. Don't put it on your clothes. If you need to have a smock, you can get a smock. You don't have to ask. You just get up to get them when we're using the, uh, when we're starting the project. Put them over your head. Remember, I do not tie for you. So you bring it around, and these even fit me, so they'll definitely fit you. Bring it around and you just tie it. You don't ever tie it in a knot, okay? Or you can always get your shoulder buddy to do it for you. And then they get hung up on the hooks in the back. Um, so if you don't like oil pastels, then use a crayon. It doesn't matter to me. So here's regular crayons, and I wouldn't, but I wouldn't use both, okay? Or these are fluorescent crayons, the ones in the closet with the five on them. Um, and fill it up. Have it balanced where it's all over your paper, okay? And then, now we're gonna pretend like we have everything done and we're ready to paint. Now, I've talked to you, and I will have a mat. I forgot to get a mat out, so you'll use a paper mat. Um, I've talked about how to take care of a paintbrush, and we are sharing these paints. We never mix our paints with okay? No, not here, please. And these are already lined up. We have the warm colors and the cool colors. I personally would not paint with the brown and the black. Um, it, sometimes it just, it will ruin your project. And I hate for that to happen because you can't take paint off. Now these are watercolors and so you will have to put a little bit of water. I have new tubs in the center of your table. They look like little dog bowls, they are. And this is the lip of your container. We talked about that in the other video. Uh, you will choose your paintbrush that you want. This is a round one. Uh, it's very delicate you can use a fine line with that or you can use any of these paint brushes. But what I would suggest, whatever you're starting so you don't ruin your project, make sure your paintbrush is clean. And I'm just very gently cleaning it on the bottom. This is the lip. Remember, we're going on the lip of the container. We're not splattering anybody. Check my paper towel, okay? And these are really thick. I wouldn't use them on the watercolors. I would suggest the round brushes. So I'm going to go back to the round. And you can fill the whole thing in. You can do a little bit of paint, whatever you choose to do. I want you to see I'm holding it like a ballerina slipper and I'm very gently moving it around, creating that paint, activating the paint, okay? And then we hold it like a ballerina slipper. And I'm gonna show you that picture at the back of the room. You need to be careful. You might need to take another piece of paper, a scrap piece of paper, which I don't have any that are over here. They already have stuff on them and set them underneath or on top of so your hand is not getting dirty. Ooh, that purple is so pretty. Now what you're gonna find out is when you use your paintbrush on top of the oil pastels, it's like a barrier or the crayon. It will not paint on top of it, okay? And it's kind of like a wall. And now it's really dark and I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I love the color purple here. That's Mrs. Milligan's favorite color. Add some more water, because I've got too much paint. And you wanna go slow, and you, I'm, the uh, Sharpie will not bleed, uh, but you can paint, don't be thinking that the Sharpie will keep you from getting out of that line. Now, oil pastel will. 
and I'm not going to sit here and paint this whole thing for you, but you can decide how much paint that you want and what colors you want to use and what patterns you want to use. And, you know, maybe you want to leave some white spaces. That's up to you. So here is my start of the paint of the eye. Really like that purple. Um, then I'm going to pretend like I'm done and I'm going to clean my paintbrush, being very careful around people that are around me. Use the lip, dry it off with my paper towel, reshape it, and at the end, they will go up in the cup. Okay, we've talked about that before, up in the cup. But at the moment, I could just set it down right here. Now, when we paint, we stop at the first timer, okay, because we have to have enough time to clean everything up. This is something that is important. When you are done with your project, you want to be careful and carry it like it's a tray of hot cookies. And this is our drying rack that's behind me. I'm going to scoot this over here so you can see it. Please do not put it on the top. You always want to go on the bottom. And Mrs. Milligan will tell you if it's going to be on the red drying rack or the black drying rack, okay? So enjoy your project today. I'm looking forward to seeing what they look like. Okay.